Hello everybody, my name is Big Citrus and let's get into it. We're actually making a video about this. It's been a bit of a weird time in the Overwatch community as of recent. We're getting a bunch of positive changes and honestly pretty decent content updates recently, and the community seems to be more in a healthy place than it was a year ago. I'm curious to see how long it lasts, but things have been looking better and better for Overwatch 2 recently, which is weird because if you've been around for the last like two years, you would know that it has been an actual copium hellscape being an Overwatch fan. But as other games games get worse and worse, people seem to be coming back to Overwatch and praising it a bit more positively than they used to. The people with the media and culture analysis of 5 year olds that shat on this game constantly for easy likes and views and everything have seemed to kind of die down more recently. We're getting a bunch of rank changes soon, new characters, new heroes, new lore, new collab events, and the gaming industry at whole is just changing a lot. Hell, they even keep changing some of the characters' ages for some reason, Blizzard, what's going on there? As things keep changing, in the world of Overwatch, one thing remains a constant, the same. Everybody fucking hates Mercy mains, but Mercy mains tend to hate everybody else who isn't a Mercy main. So if you haven't noticed, I've like made some of my most popular and well-received videos talking about what your Overwatch main says about you, did it for Apex as well. It's basically just Zodiacs for gamers, but hey, I enjoy them and you all enjoy watching them and I have bills to pay, so why would I stop making them? Honestly, it's probably not gonna surprise anybody that the most comments I get are from Mercy mains, either agreeing with my assessment of them or just enraged. Even to this day, Mercy mains get tons and tons of hate, and I'm kind of interested to see if they deserve it. Fucking mercy! <laughs> it's kind of a thing, like, even outside of the Overwatch community. People kind of just, like, get the joke about Mercy Main. It is a character for female Overwatch players who don't know how to actually play roles and just, you know, will pocket other people on their team and get carried to success. Overwatch definitely isn't the game that originated the cute, you know, aesthetically pleasing female character that is just there to mindlessly support the other people who do all the damage and get all the kills in the match and get carried to victory archetype, but it's definitely the game that popularized it. There's actually a lot of female female players who play Overwatch, and almost all of them play Mercy a lot, if not main her completely. And today, we are going to go into a full in-depth analysis. No, I am not being sarcastic or unserious, I'm really, I'm really taking this one seriously, guys. Onto why does everybody hate Mercy mains, and do they deserve it? I imagine people who are longtime viewers of this channel, there's gonna be, you know, two reactions. The first reaction is, Big Citrus, what the fuck is this video? I expect real, interesting, long-form, educated, and highly researched content from you, not this schlock. Or, this was an amazing idea for a video, I'm so entertained, please keep going. And I'm gonna try and make this video a piece like both types of people, so I'm gonna split this into two sections. I'm currently on a journey to save Overwatch by continuing to make content for this game. Uh, you know, I'm grasping at straws, as you can tell. And streaming this game weekly, I stream at Big Citrus underscore on Twitch, and I also stream on this YouTube channel three times a week. As I try to finally finish my seven year journey to top 500, also do reviewing of clips and VODs and playing games with my community. I know. Best way to interact with me is to join the community discord and follow the link to the description below. To help me continue this journey of hashtag it's not overwatch and let's fucking get into it. So, uh, where do we start? I'm kind of just winging this one at the moment. Look, I'm going to go in depth in everything, but I think this is going to be a really good precursor for just kind of what my opinions are going to be throughout this video. And this should do a good job of kind of explaining my position, and then I'm going to go into depth on why the situation is that way, and, you know, why I feel that way. So, here we go. Mercy is the Taylor Swift of Overwatch. It's kind of a perfect analogy when you think about it. They're both very pretty, yet generic, blonde white women. They have absurdly large fan bases that almost seem to appoint like a cult. I mean, this is a bit of an outrageous comparison. Mercy is a fictional character, and Taylor Swift is basically the equivalent of Jesus in the real world. I guess Mercy is also kind of like an equivalent of Jesus, because she like revives people, and people always like ask her, like, white girl, save me. They both are rather uncontroversial figures. They seem to hold pretty good, you know, politics and just generally seem to be nice people at their core, but you get the feeling that if you were ever to cross them, they would ruin your life. Like I said, their fan bases are almost like a cult to an extent where any criticism of the person they worship or the people inside of this cult 
it's all the same. And anything that is a legitimate criticism or an unfair criticism will be seen as nothing but slander. If you diss a Mercy main or a Swifty, you are attacking Taylor Swift and Mercy personally. If you diss Taylor Swift or Mercy, you are attacking their fans personally. And also, of course, uh, these fan bases are populated 90% by LGBT people and women. And the most commonplace thing is that I think Mercy and Taylor Swift are both pretty good. I know, shocker. What can I say? I'm a fan of good music, and if you don't think that Taylor Swift has written some of the best songs to come out in the last 10 years, I think you're fucking kidding yourself, and you're just hating because you want to hate and you want to seem cool. I'm not saying every Taylor Swift song is perfect, but honestly, you go through her catalog, you go through her album releases, there is some of the best singer-songwriter material you will ever see in your life. Same with Mercy, you know, new lore dumps, new skins come out and everything, always fire. And Mercy and Taylor Swift, you know, they work their ass off you know they are always serving cunt they are always slaying people love to hate on these two white women mainly because they are successful and everyone loves them and yeah i get it jealousy is a bitch and are they a bit overrated for sure but also overhated yeah absolutely they both have great qualities and they both deserve to be praised and it's no wonder with the way they are and the way they look and the content they provide that they have such a ravenous fan base obviously they're like literally appealing to like 80 percent of all people on earth and their reputation definitely precedes them. I feel like that's a good analogy. Now, it's usually a bad idea to start with a more controversial topic and everything because a lot of people in the comments might disagree with me and click off the video. It's usually a safer idea to, you know, reel them in by, you know, presenting the safe choice first, getting them interested in the video, and since they're already watching, they continue to listen to the opinions you have. We're, uh, we're gonna throw that out the window today, and we're gonna talk about the more controversial one first, because I'm bored and I want to just get into it. So I'm not trying to start a flame war in the comments. And I'm guessing that this section may do that somehow, but let's just go. I'm kind of throwing a net over LGBTQ people and women in this video. I, I don't mean that as like, I'm like capturing them and like, you know, things like that. That's not what I meant. Okay. I'm trying to say that I'm like kind of bunching them together. And I imagine some people in the comments will have a problem with that, but let me kind of explain why. I really think that when a lot of like, you know, companies look at demographics for video games, there are two, maybe three, three real ways they split up like minority groups and gender. They don't really look at race or like religion as much. Most men who play video games kind of have the same mindset. They either like deep and expansive single player games, you know, maybe like simulation games and things like that. Games with like turn-based combat, lots of storytelling and just, you know, lots of gameplay to grind and objects to collect. These are more of the nerd type gamer who, you know, companies have not been pandering to in a long time, but maybe with games like Ball there's Gate 3 being a huge success recently, perhaps they will start to again. And there's the man gamers who only play games that get released like once every two years because they have short attention spans and they just need to be stimulated and it's video games are one of the only things that keep them going in life. They play a lot of games like Overwatch and Apex and Valor and the new, you know, FIFA and Madden and CODs and, you know, Assassin's Creed and fucking God of War games and Spider-Man. Yeah, that can shove down everybody's throat all the time. These people, you know, probably would not like to play the deep and expansive single player like RPG open world explorative like simulation like visual novel games that I was mentioning earlier and they're gonna say that those games are mid and boring AF. These two groups of male gamers don't really like interact that much and honestly I've seen a lot of female gamers becoming like this recently too falling into the second half only playing the slop games but a lot of male gamers are the same in the same way where a lot of them have weird political opinions. I know there's a fair amount of you who are normal and who really don't give a shit and like don't care about political stuff in gaming you just kind of be like eh whatever representation is cool. And then there are a lot of people with weird religious political views who constantly complain about politics being shoved down your throat in gaming, but they always make everything to political argument. They don't like when women keep getting shoved into gaming or, you know, people of other races or other sexual orientations. And they always complain about it when a new game comes out and they have like a female character in it or gay people in it or trans people in it. I'm not saying that all male gamers are like this. It's just like a third of them at least, which is a lot. What I'm trying to say is there are a lot of male gamers who are bigots who don't even like a lot of the people that I'm probably going to be talking about in this video to begin with. And males have been the main like target demographic that has been like pinpointed and been the demographic that's really been just like pushed and targeted and focus tested with like companies really always try to sell games to these people why do you think every call of duty game makes almost a billion dollars every time it comes out even if the game is dog shit recently though a lot more women and lgbtq people have been targeted you know and games are being made with them in mind or perhaps you know being pushed towards them specifically i really do not have a problem with it when you do it correctly and i think representation and diversity is one thing that makes us excel i think that's one of the best parts about human culture is that we can always find a place for that and we can always uplift others 
but there's always going to be people who uh, get offended by the things they don't understand and the things they fear and the things they're insecure about and they just get upset. So when they see representation in gaming or in like new diversity being included that wasn't included before, it destroys their comfy worldview and they, you know, talk about go woke, go broke and, you know, they just want to go back to the way things were before and then go watch their Aiden Ross and fucking Sneeko stream. Doom scroll on TikTok for 90 hours because Kylie or Alyssa wouldn't snap them back. I don't fucking know. The internet has truly destroyed a lot of people's fucking brains. Now, again, a lot of you are going to look at the title and be like, what in the fuck did any of that have to do with Overwatch and Mercy players? Trust me, we will get there. I'm not trying to make a huge political statement in this video. I am honestly really not, but we gotta get the full scope of the situation so I can prove my point. I told you I wasn't fucking slacking around in this video, okay? I felt like I was kind of overdoing it for this video because it's, you know, such an unserious topic and I was taking it so seriously. So I decided to have chat GPT and some like AI prompts write me some like, you know, the history of like women and like LGBTQ people in gaming and I want to see what it came up with. And we're just going to read that for this segment so I can save some time. Oh, fuck. I'm joking, obviously, about all that. The, the point I'm trying to convey with that joke about having AI write something is there's really not a lot of history when it comes to women and LGBTQ people in gaming and, like, representation about them. That really only became a thing within the last, like, I wanna say 10 years. Child trans characters, even, like, to this current year, are not often show that much in gaming. Classic example I remember is with Borderlands, where including, like, bisexual and gay characters and, like, prominent female roles, like, in their game since 2008. So, you know, even though we like to shit on Gearbox, the company that made Borderlands, you know, they, they actually have been very progressive and everything, which I appreciate. But in Tiny Tina's Wonderland's uh, Borderlands 3 spinoff game, basically, they had one of the characters who was featured in Borderlands 3 who had some secret dialogue you could find. They were basically talking about their gender identity struggles, and you actually see kind of what they would like in this game. They were born a woman, but in this D&D &D world, like D&D &D spinoff game, you know, they're role-playing as a man and everything, because you know, that's what they want to be deep down and everything. I did see some Borderlands fans who are fans of this super progressive ass franchise who really weren't okay with this and got very upset at Tiny Tina's Wonderlands about this, which is just like interesting. We're, if we're gonna specifically go down like the LGBTQ side of things and like you know that group of people and like their history in the gaming world and the gaming culture, there's honestly not a lot. I'm doing a decent amount of research for this and everything, and I bet I'm probably gonna add a lot of text on screen and go back and, you know, add some dialogue throughout this video, but honestly, I don't think I'm really gonna be changing much in terms of that. Because the first ever major, major mainstream fucking video game to feature a gay character as one of the main characters, main promoted character, hell, she's the girl on the cover, is Tracer from Overwatch. So it's no surprise to see that over the years, Overwatch has cultivated a massive LGBTQ audience. And there are a lot of LGBTQ people who play Overwatch and of course, because of that, a lot of them are female. And so a lot of them play Mercy, but let's go back to the history for now. Just general, like, you know, heterosexual women have obviously a much bigger history in, you know, gaming culture and the gaming world, but, but not by much. Now, as everyone knows, for the most part, a lot of companies did not include women in video games back in the day, unless they were at least showing a fair amount of skin or tight wearing tight clothing. A lot of games try to be more progressive about that nowadays, but how, like even Overwatch, look at the stock designs for some of these characters. Game Gaming companies cannot change the simple fact that having women who look attractive and showing off their attractive bodies will sell more copies of a video game. And that's always kind of been something that women in gaming have struggled with, which is, you know, not being seen as sex objects. If you're a popular online content creator, a game developer that's like a female or something, or like female voice actress and everything in games, you get sexualized a lot. You see it a lot with like online female content creators nowadays who play video games, even ones who are not popular for showing off their body, get treated really fucking weird. Most like Pokimane, for example. I could see a lot of reasons why someone would dislike Pokimane. I'm not necessarily one of those people. Pokimane did not become famous because she showed off her body. She became famous because people liked their aesthetic and vibe, and she hustled at streaming for a long time. And for sure, women do obviously get a small boost when it comes to people who are streamers, because a lot of people who watch live streams are lonely men. When you see a cute girl with a cute voice streaming, and she's playing your favorite video games, you're gonna be drawn to them more than you're gonna be drawn 
drawn to someone like me playing Overwatch. <laughs> but even like when Pokemon career really started to blow up and everything, one of the main things that I always heard people talk about on the internet is how she has a ridiculously fat ass and would creepily just like anytime she turned around to stand up a graph or something on her stream, would just post clips of it. And it was just like, okay. I know some people in the comments might say, well, that's the only reason she has fans or subs or whatever. And I, and yes, I guarantee you a large portion of her audience is just weirdo simp incels who for some reason think they have a chance with her. But regardless, anytime I hear Pokimane's name get brought up, and this goes for like all female content creators and streamers whenever they're in controversy, you're just getting brought up for any reason at all. They are sexualized in some way, shape, or form, saying that she's only famous because of her ass, or she's a whore, and she sucked people off at Twitch to get views, blah, 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 blah. There are reasons you can have to dislike this woman, but does that really have to be one of them? And this comes all the way back around. That's always what it comes down to with women in gaming. It's about their bodies and everything. Are they showing enough skin? Are they showing too little? It's always some sort of form of controversy. It's very rare that you ever see a female character, someone who like is a female in gaming, or they be like esports, a dev or a content creator or something, that you ever see them being discussed for reasons that do not have to do with their body. You know, I'm hammering this point, but trust me, if you think about it, it has really fucking been true. Is that a lot of problems in the gaming industry are caused by the predominant amount of clothes by the men who play video games. Now, to be fair, someone can just say, Big Citrus, what, how does this still have to pertain to the video? You were taking this way too seriously. You are making this into something it's not. And you know what? I probably am. I'm gonna continue taking this seriously because it's so fun. So it's finally time to loop this all back to Overwatch. Mercy was a character that was heavily inspired by the medic from Team Fortress 2. A lot of Overwatch devs obviously admitted that Team Fortress 2 was an inspiration for the game. When Overwatch got compared to Team Fortress 2, you know, they didn't take it as an insult because they were designing the game kind of with Team Fortress 2 in mind, as they knew a lot of Team Fortress 2 players, like myself, were going to try Overwatch one day and they wanted characters in the game that felt familiar to them. So there is a fair amount of characters that were a part of the original Overwatch roster that were designed to be similar to Team Fortress 2 characters. When Widowmaker is very obviously similar to the Sniper. May, in a way, was similar to the Pyro. Torbjorn was very similar to the Engineer. Junkrat was very similar to the Demo Man. Bastion, similar to the Heavy. Tracer, similar to the Scout. Pharah, similar to the Soldier. And of course, Mercy, similar to the Medic. They both have the Noodle Beam that heals people. And the Medic in Team Fortress 2 has ways to amplify damage, a lot more complicated than the way Mercy does it with just the press of a button. And they both have like a fast shooting but low damage, like kind of pistol option for their main defense weapon. They did add a couple things to Mercy that made her different. They obviously gave her the ability to resurrect, which I imagine was inspired by the medic's ability to resurrect in the man versus machine team Fortress 2 horde mode, except she used to be able to res five people at once. What were they thinking? And also she has the ability to dash to souls that was she could res and to teammates wherever they were. Besides that, she basically played the exact same way as the medic. Minus the supercharge. A Mercy originally was supposed to look like this, which is obviously very, very different. Now, I think this was ingenious on Blizzard's part, whoever designed her, whoever was behind it originally, to design her as an objectively beautiful, busty white woman. Because, like, 90% of Overwatch players are gonna find her attractive and appealing. And specifically, people who usually play support roles in video games, which are women or LGBTQ people, would also think she's gorgeous and would want to be like her or, you know, Know, be her. And of course, they made her a doctor and gave her this very soothing, motherly personality, but also, you know, a bit sassy. Honestly, I think to bait people into playing Mercy who like playing support roles in video games, they designed her perfectly. When it comes to female and LGBTQ people, LGBTQ people really didn't start getting representation except for like the last 10 years, and females in gaming didn't really start getting representation until like the 90s, early 2000s, and they weren't really treated on the same level as a lot of male characters until, in my opinion, the last 10 years. Same as the LGBTQ groups. One common amount of representation that I did start to see was support roles in video games specifically being like targeted towards like LGBTQ people and women. Well, let's just be for real, more casual players play support roles in competitive video games. And when it comes to Overwatch, specifically Mercy. Mercy is not the easiest, but she is one of the easiest characters in the entire game. So again, no surprise to see that a lot of women LGBTQ people play Mercy. Now, I know that some people 
who are going to fall in this demographic are uh, probably already clicked off of the video at this point and are feeling a little, you know, disregarded because I haven't even like talking about like why people hate Mercy Mains and if they deserve it so far in this video. I know that there are some straight men who play Mercy who are feeling very remiss that I have not mentioned them right now. Look, I see you. I will say the one underlying factor between Mercy mains, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, race, whatever, is that they are more casual gamers who like playing the support roles in video games. And there is nothing wrong with that. And a lot of these straight men who play Mercy just play her because they just like healing people, makes them feel good. And to them, it is fun. But, you know, straight men, gotta keep it real with me, you know? You gotta understand that you actually are in the minority when it comes to Mercy Mains. How about that? That must make you feel good, right? Maybe, I don't know. Now look, I was going back through the recordings for this video and like editing it and everything before I actually started to edit the video because, you know, some of these videos take me several days just to fucking record because they are such like a chemical migraine for my brain. I digress. And look, I'm not gonna lie. I think with the whole, you know, political angle and the whole like identity and diversity angle, I'm gonna admit, I probably overdid it a little bit. But the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. We're, now that we're diving in, in you know, more to... Now, uh, now that we're diving in more... Oh my fucking God, I can't speak. Now that we are diving in more into the meat of this video, I feel like I can really just start to go a little crazy. Let's look at a character like Mercy versus a character like Junkrat. Now, there's a lot of things these two characters have in common. One of them being that basically anyone who's ever played an FPS game for about mm, 20 minutes can play these characters and play them well. And look, no one wants to admit this, but that is really fucking important if you're trying to be a successful FPS game nowadays. People who have literally never touched a controller or a mouse and keyboard in their entire life need to be able to play these games and have characters that they can actually succeed with and have fun with, or else they're never gonna get into the fucking game. Imagine if every Overwatch hero was as hard as Echo, and you're a, like a 12 year old child who boots up Overwatch for the first time, and you know, is trying to have fun, you know, online matches and learn the game, play some quick play. You would be fucking miserable. You would be having a harder learning experience than the Navy SEALs. And with how many people who are just diehard Overwatch players who just go into quick play matches and sweat, it is hard enough to get into this game nowadays. So I do think that having characters that are accessible to anyone, even people who are really fucking bad at video games for whatever reason, is super important. And that is one of the reasons the Overwatch exploded into popularity as it did when it first came out. That's one reason I hate when people say games like Team Fortress 2 take more skill because Team Fortress 2 has always had the pyro and the heavy and the engineer. And look, yes, those characters have lots of tech and everything, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, go watch an Uncle Dane video. But for the most part, anyone can play these characters. They're insanely easy. And that's another reason that Team Fortress 2 was successful. A lot of people like myself had never really played FPS games before TF2. So when they first loaded up, you're able to play someone like the Pyro and just hold W mouse one and get really far. Mercy and Junkrat, are in a way W mouse one characters. Mercy's main job is to beat up someone's ass, either damage boosting them or healing them and trying to not get herself killed in the back line. Junkrat's main job is to look down a sight line and throw grenades. Obviously, I'm breaking these characters down to a very, very surface level examination. I have played a lot of Junkrat and I know that there is a lot that separates a Junkrat with 100 hours from a Junkrat with 1,000 hours. Same thing goes for Mercy players. But here's the thing. Junkrat mains do not get half of the hate that Mercy mains get. And why is that? Well, let's look at how Mercy mains usually act. I don't think it's a controversial statement to state that Mercy mains have somewhat of a god complex. They know they play one of the easier healers in the game, but for some reason have completely fucking convinced themselves that they are the gods at the game and other you know, support players just don't even come close to them. And that's just not true. If we're being honest, Mercy is the second easiest healer in the game behind Moira. And yes, Mercy mains have annoying inferiority complexes and can get really, really, really toxic the moment someone calls them out for being a Mercy one trick. But Junkrat mains usually 
basically do the same thing. And yet, Junkrat mains don't get shit on nearly half as hard. But obviously, there are a lot of other easy characters that have, you know, people who main them who are really annoying, but I'm just using Junkrat as I feel like the most general example. Like I said, there's an argument to be made that Junkrat is an easier character than Mercy. Sure, as Mercy, sometimes you're just gonna have a match where you hold damage boosts and occasionally heal on someone, and then you just don't have to do anything and you win. But Junkrat, even at the higher levels of the game, can still just get random kills from someone walking into one of his traps or just shooting two grenades at someone's spawn. Also, if we're being honest, at the lower ranks, a good Junkrat has significantly more impact on the match than a good Mercy player. Where if you're at low ranks and you're just doing stupid Junkrat shit and just getting like four man rip tires consistently, you will just single handedly carry the match. And it's not very hard to do that at low ranks. And also, Junkrat, I love him. He's fun, but he is an annoying fucking character to have to play against at any rank. Unless the Junkrat player in question is fucking horrible. Nothing is worse than getting caught a mine out of nowhere and just getting insta-gimped by the Junkrat. Just, it's not fun. Which I know Junkrat mains in the comments are gonna argue, Oh, well you should have fucking made sure there wasn't a trap on the floor. Hmm. The point I am trying to make is, let's say the Junkrat was predominantly mained by female players and people who are LGBTQ. I guarantee you that Junkrat mains would have some of the worst reputation in the entire Overwatch community. And I think this kind of goes in hand with the way that a lot of Mercy mains act. A lot of Mercy mains really do act like they are always being attacked and they really do act like the world revolves around them. Anytime a Mercy nerf or rework or a thing gets changed about Mercy's character or a skin gets changed or someone on Twitter makes a joke about Mercy mains, they fucking explode. They can't deal with it. I think a lot of them act this way though, because Mercy mains get a lot of unnecessary hate just because of the people that play them. Overwatch is generally a more accepting community than most other games. There are still shitbags who the second they hear a female on the mic, lose their fucking mind. When they hear someone who's obviously a woman or gay or trans on the mic, they lose their fucking mind and immediately start treating them differently and will either only be nice to them because, you know, there's someone that this person who is treating them differently is attracted to and they're trying to add them after the match to play some e-girl arcade game modes and become their new Discord daddy. Or it's because, oh, well, because of who you are, I automatically think that you are dog shit at the video game and of course you're playing Mercy. Of course we need to talk about the stereotype that implies that women are bad at video games. On average, men have more experience playing video games and have been playing them since they were little. While most women I play video games with and know and everything, just they weren't really encouraged to when they were younger, and if they were encouraged to play video games, they weren't FPS or competitive games often. I think that could partially be the reason a lot of female players play support roles in video games like Mercy, because they know that they can get success on those characters and provide something for the team and not really get called bad at the game. It's easy to get value out of a character like Mercy or other supports in Overwatch watch and it's harder to see when you as a support player are really lacking for the team especially when you're playing a character like mercy where you can just heal bot and you'll be the subject of ridicule much much less often even though there are a lot of female and lgbtq mercy mains and everything a lot of them won't speak on the mic because they know the second that someone hears their voice they're gonna immediately assume that they're bad at video games even if they've been doing good during that match i will admit that a lot of mercy one trick ponies really only care about having the highest healing in the entire entire lobby, which, if we're being honest, is not what Mercy is about. I would say Mercy is ultimately about the secondary thing she can do, because if you're going to heal bot, there is legitimately no fucking reason to play Mercy, in my opinion. Yes, she has a lot of freedom of movement, but in my opinion, if you're gonna heal bot, every other healer except for like Lucio, Zen, and Brig is better. And they only go for res if it is completely and utterly safe, and no one can lay a finger on them, and they can just take a nice little leisurely stroll, wave their hand in the air, and watch their teammate come back to life, and they see that it says player saved, and they just, the serotonin they get, mm. And then there is the Pillow Princess Mercy Pocket duo. This is someone who is only going to res the person that they are queued with, and they are gonna use damage boost a lot, mainly on their hitscan DPS daddy. Someone who is probably playing on a smurf account, maybe they're in a relationship with this person, or maybe the hitscan, uh, you know, DPS smurf discord daddy is just trying to get in their fucking pants, probably. Now I will admit, 
these players are usually much better at the game. Their mercy movement is usually pretty fucking cracked. Like they play like mercy parkour in their off time and everything. And they're significantly more aggressive player and will just go for stupid reses as long as it's on the person they're doing with. And they'll just pop their ult for it even. These people will get significantly more toxic though. Or ask the person they're doing with to, you know, fight the people in chat in the lobby for them. And look, these are the most like two common play styles you see when playing mercy. And someone who's an actual good mercy player will be someone who is a mixture of both of these things. They know when it's time to heal bot, and they know when it's time to pocket. Because of a lot of these reasons, Mercy mains are kind of just like universally hated, and they're really only beloved by people who consistently play support on Overwatch, or are themselves Mercy mains, or are simps who are looking to get a little bit of coochie and or bussy. All forms are welcome here. And of course you got to about the aesthetic that Mercy mains have. The, the chances of them just having like a pink pastel matching keyboard and computer and headset, microphone fucking combo, RGB lights in their fucking room, send Rio plushies and squishmallows decked throughout, a little boba cup, maybe a vape hidden under their fucking mouse pad at all times, some Lexapro in the fucking bathroom cabinet, wearing some fucking leggings or a sweater that they got from Sheen or Urban Outfitters. And like, I feel like I gotta say that in this video. If you are offended by this video, know that I'm genuinely not really judging anyone. This video is mainly just to poke fun and look at a topic in a community that I have been a part of for a long time. Continuing onwards though, most Mercy mains have this aesthetic and I imagine, you know, a lot of, you know, gamer Sigma male Overwatch players, which there's becoming less and less of every day, probably look at this and are just mad because I don't know, women make them upset and they go get off Overwatch and they go to play fucking COD. There's always gonna be a weird stigma around Mercy mains. They are the most predominant female and LGBTQ player base in any video game I have ever seen. You didn't really see any hate for Mercy mains until like, mm, 2018, 2019 Overwatch because for the first couple few-ish years of Overwatch lifespan, it was perfectly acceptable to main this character because there were a lot more people who played Overwatch consistently back then and for that reason played the more consistently easier characters to get value out of. So for that reason, they were more Mercy mains and a lot of them were male. But ever since the player base has dwindled and the game has been changed a lot and other newer heroes have come out, a lot of the people you see playing a character like Mercy fall into the groups that I have stated. And because yes, they could be really cringe and bad at the game sometimes because of the people who play her who love this character and how many of them you consistently see any kind of a watch lobby, quick play, ranked, whatever, how low rank, high rank, they get an exponential amount of hate. Sometimes because they deserve it and sometimes because of people's fragile egos and they don't want people like that in their video games. Let's just sum it up. If you just wanted to hear your conclusion, skip to the end and skip all the serious parts of this video. To conclude, Mercy mains are not ashamed of who they are, or at least they don't act like it. They're not afraid to be feminine. They're not afraid to be gay or trans. They're not afraid to be themselves. And they're not afraid to have their name be something cringy like Mochi Bun, Snow Frost. They're not afraid to be cringe. And they're not afraid to show off who they are and they're not afraid to love playing Overwatch, even though people call it cringe. They're not afraid to love playing Mercy and show that off too. And a lot of people do not have that level of confidence. But then again, there are a lot of Mercy mains who have an inferiority complex because they know deep down they play a character at the game that is very easy. It's the only character they can play. Some of them really can play other heroes and can literally just only play Mercy. No matter what, if someone looks at your career profile and sees Mercy as your most played character, you're going to get called a Mercy one trick or a Mercy main. And I honestly think that no matter what you do as a Mercy main, even if you are one of those rare, rare, rare straight male Mercy mains, you will still get a minor level of hate and discrimination put towards you. And I don't think it is deserved. Hopefully that sums up why everybody hates Mercy mains and do they deserve it. But if I had to sum it up in like a sentence, this is what I would say. Everybody hates Mercy mains because of the way a lot of Mercy mains act, their identity, and the way they play the character. Do they deserve it? In reason. I would say if you have a nasty attitude and you're doing really bad and you're not trying at all to fix it and you're just being rude to people when you get called out, I think you absolutely do deserve it. But that goes for any person in any video game. You just seem to see it happen more with Mercy mains. One last thing. I don't know why I decided to go even more extra, but there was a song I wanted to make for this video. And uh, a fair amount of you seem to enjoy my music on Spotify and Apple Music and actually seem to think that I have a small amount of talent, so thank you for that. This song is going to be something a little bit more sweet and I guess, uh, fruity. World's gone crazy, it's just you and me, baby, and my brain's gone hazy and I need someone to save me, my house running low, you're the only home I know, it seems
Cause everybody's on me I'm my hey, mercy bless me I'm back down, pushed into the ground And again somehow, you're the only one around They hit me from like every single angle Now I'm really crying out for my guardian angel We've been through it all, yet we still stand tall Everybody's jealous, they ain't got you to call all these battles and they never seem to end And you're always there to heal me, I just need to say when Hair white like the snow, yeah you always seem to glow You got skin like silk and you never seem to will I got you in my pocket and I never want to stop And make me fly like a Valkyrie, this is all I wanna be Thank you guys so much, I love making this content, I really really do like I said, streaming three times a week. Make sure you follow my Twitch, Big Citrus underscore. Streaming Monday, Wednesday, sometimes Thursday, and Saturday, usually in the middle of the day. And of course, follow my Spotify, TikTok, all that stuff and everything. Go ahead and stream that and support it. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. I've been Big Citrus, and have a damn good one. Even you, Mercy Mains.